Hello, hello everybody, Janine Truitt here. How are you? Hello, Liv. I'm not sure how you say that, Livin'. <laughs> Thank you for joining. Hello to my replay viewers. There you go, how are you? Hope you guys are having a great night. I just got to put my babies to bed. Hello, Lonismo. I hope I'm saying that right. Thanks for joining. Just put the babies to bed and I figured I would hop on and have a discussion with you all about three key items to include in your business agreements. Um, this is something that I actually, what you saw before I turned the camera around, was something that I had written for um, Womaner. And if you don't know what Womaner is, Womaner is a women's platform that just launched, I believe in April of this um, year that helps women entrepreneurs um, basically to thrive. And they offer a lot of different things, um, mentorship, and they have a fantastic blog with great women on that. Um, that write about a various different topics. I tend to write about careers in business and I've been with them for a few months now writing. So if you haven't checked it out or you didn't know about them, check out womaner.com. If this is the first time that you are visiting one of my scopes, let me tell you a little bit about me. So as I said before, my name is Janine Truitt and I am the Chief Innovations Officer for Talent Think Innovations, LLC. I'm based in New York, and it's a consulting firm that focuses on providing strategy for startups and small to mid-sized businesses that help businesses to attract, develop, and retain the right talent for their organizations, essentially. So that's what I do. And tonight, I'm actually here to help you, hopefully, um, with some things that I've just learned in business over time. And that is having a good agreement. And when I say agreement, I mean an agreement, a contract, something tangible that you give to your clients that they either sign or that helps them understand how they're going to be engaging with you during the course of your project or consulting gig. So I started off with this early, early on in my business, largely because I came from corporate America before and one of the things we did um, many times in the companies that I work for is anytime we went out for any kind of work, we would have a scope of what we call the scope of work um, because we often had a RFP process, which is a request for a proposal. So right off the bat, when I started my business, I said, I'm adopting the same, maybe not quite as stringent as what it would be in-house, but I have adopted a scope of work for my business. Hi, FC Naturals, how are you? Thanks for joining. Thank you for the hearts. If you love what I'm saying, the hearts are definitely welcome. So as I said, one of the things we did in corporate America was we had these scope of works and the scope of work did a few things for us. The scope of work kind of um, focused us on specifically what we wanted out of the vendor and in return, the vendor understood what specifically we were looking for from them. And that was the guiding document. So when we went out for work and we decided that we were gonna do business with any one vendor, they understood what our needs were, we understood what they can do for us, everyone signed on the dotted line, all was well. I find it fascinating though, um, because I do do some work business to business and I find it fascinating that, you know, a few times I've been asked to kind of forego my scope of work um, in, in the sense that they felt it was too formal of a thing to have in small business. I was actually told that. Um, and I think that's fascinating because my whole thing is, yes, we're two small businesses maybe or even two medium sized businesses working together, but there's got to be some kind of anchor between us in order to hold this thing in place. And, you know, you don't know how people are gonna do you when you end up deciding to do business with them. I mean, since I started my business in 2013, there've been a number of people who have screwed me in one way or another, pardon my French, they just have. And, you know, when you get screwed, you get screwed out of money, you get screwed out of time, 
um, a lot of different things. It caused you angst. Um, so enough times of that happening, I don't like to be browbeaten with the same thing over and over again. And so I've the same scope of work that I had, it just has continued to get fine tuned as I go on. And I make sure now that I have three critical things in that scope of work and I'm ready to make it evolve again if I need to, if I start to see certain trends with the businesses that I'm doing business with essentially. So one of the things that I, that's kind of the alpha and omega of the scope of work is just this whole paragraph or two where you kind of outline, you know, who your company is, what it is you do. And in response to whatever conversation you've had with the client, vendor, whatever, you basically outline specifically what you understand their need to be. So that's how you start off this document. And it's very clear, you don't have to be overly verbose, but it assists you and them in the long run in keeping a focus on exactly what they need. There are things that I outline that are in scope and there are things that are out of scope and the out of scope things are things that maybe we discussed. They're kind of like the nice to haves. We may revisit them later on in the project, but for now they're out of scope. And so we focus very heavily on the things that are in scope, what they need immediately, what I can immediately impact for them right this moment. So that's number one. Um, the other thing that I've had to add to my scope of work over time is pricing terms. Um, because I had my own pricing terms. I had them in my invoices, which was one way of communicating that. I had communicated it verbally but I still was getting clients that decided they were gonna pay me when they could pay me or when they wanted to pay me. Ain't nobody got time for that. Just saying, don't have time for that. You have a business, you deliver a service, um, you expect to get paid. That's kind of how this thing works. Um, you know, Unless you're volunteering and, and that's a separate thing. But if you're in business to make money um, and, and all those other things, um, you need to get paid. So. I was getting people, although I was at the time net 15, I was getting people coming in net 30, net 40, net 45, and um, it just got to be crazy. So now I'm very, very explicit in my scope of work about when you need to pay me, what the payment terms are, and that doesn't mean I won't be flexible. I will certainly you know, speak to a client if they have a specific need or want you know, we tailor it, but whatever we do decide on upon in the beginning is what it has to be, period, end. And they understand what the consequences are of not paying by that time. So that's the pricing terms. The other thing that I've added is cancellation policy because there are some people out there that don't understand that when you make time for a client that you're missing out on money with another potential client. So I had to help somebody just recently understand that when I make time with her for her needs, I am clearing my schedule for a specific time and a specific date so that I can be 100% attentive to her needs. And so when you cancel, which I don't have a problem with, things happen, life happens. As soon as you know, you let me know, no problem. But when you're, I'm making time for you on my calendar and you are a no-show, period, end, and there's just no phone call, there's no email, no nothing, there's got to be consequences for that. And somehow my time has to be reimbursed for. And so I have started um, putting a cancellation policy in place whereby when you book with me, there's a certain percentage up front. And, you know, if you cancel, there's no problem, you know, as long as I know in advance, even if it's like an emergency last minute, not a problem. But you will know that if you just decide that you're going to skip our session and move on and not pay anything, that's not going to happen. There's a cancellation fee that will be charged for. So if you have not implemented such a thing, I would highly consider that you do that. Hello, Ankara Crowns. Thanks for joining. I'm just going to reset a bit. For those that are joining, I'm Janine Truitt. I am the Chief Innovations Officer for Talent Think Innovations LLC, an HR and talent management consulting firm based in New York. And I am talking about three key items 
to include in your business agreements and why it's even important to have business agreements. So thank you for joining. Um, so yes, if you have not implemented a cancellation policy and you are somebody that is doing something similar to me, whether it's consulting or coaching or anything like that, and people every once and again, just kind of skip out and you're out of money, that's not going to happen. And and it's happened to me. I'm not going to sit here and act like I always had this down 100%. I didn't. I've had people skip out and then I'm sitting there like, wow, I just missed out on X amount of money um, all because they didn't show to the session. Can't have it anymore. After a while, you know, you do better because you know better. So there's a cancellation policy in my agreement as it stands now. So those are the three things just to kind of recap. One, outlining your services and what you bring to the table as a business. Two, um, making sure that you outline specifically what it is you understand their needs to be um, and making sure that they sign on the dotted line and understand that this is these are the specific concerns, issues, initiatives that you will be supporting. Um, the second piece, again, pricing terms, whatever your pricing terms, I'm not telling you, you need to go by what I do, but whatever your pricing terms are, you need to be explicit about that in your business agreements. And third, the cancellation agreement, honestly, put it in place. It may not be the bulk of your clients. It's not the bulk of my clients that do this kind of thing where they don't show up to a session, but every once and again, there's somebody that wants to try or doesn't think that it's serious or doesn't think you're going to take it as serious and you need to have something in place to kind of safeguard yourself. Um, it's so critical. Like I said in the beginning of the scope, I feel like there are some small business owners that have a small business mindset. And what do I mean by that? I don't mean to be pejorative. However, um, you need to be a small business with a big business mindset in the sense that you're safeguarding your business, your assets, um, what you do, period, end. And so just because you're in a small business or just because you're a solopreneur does not mean that you get to do things haphazardly and it should not um, lead people to think or have an expectation that you're going to conduct business with them on shifty terms. It's very, very important that everybody knows what they're getting into when you decide to take a job, a project or whatever. So um, nobody should be shocked when you send them over a contract after a consultation call or whatever to say, hey, this is what I understood your need to be. I need you to sign this before we can proceed. I mean, it's just as simple as that. And to the people that have said to me in the past that I was being, you know, perhaps a little too formal in um, expecting somebody to sign my scope of work to that I say maybe I'm not the business or partner in business for you because as long as I'm in business I'm going to safeguard my time and my money and you know we can work quite amicably together but you will sign some sort of contract abridged or otherwise um, stating that you understand my terms period end so I hope this is helpful. I don't know if anybody has questions. If you do, you can certainly um, pop something into the window there and let me know if you have any questions. But if not, I will bid you adieu. And again, um, I have written this article. I've already written on this. And so if you want to get some more insights on this whole thing, you can certainly go to womaner.com and I'll spell it for you. It's W O. M-E-N-E-U-R dot com. And I am under the careers and business section. And it's not just me. There's just a ton of great resources on this site. So please check out my article, which is three key items to include in your business agreements, but also check out some of the other um, writers that are on there because they're really phenomenal and they're all business owners in their own right. And uh, there's just some great, great information on it. If you are at all interested in what I do, please feel free. Check out talentthinkinnovations.com. I'd love to connect with any one of you if you have any offline questions about this. Again, at talentthinkinnovations.com, you can reach me. You can also reach me at talentthink 
i n n o v at gmail dot com as well, and I have a lot of other content too that I have at uh the aristocracy of hr dot com. So certainly check that out. But thank you for joining me. I appreciate you, and you have a great night. Bye.